A bouquet of flowers makes a great gift, but there's something even more special about making one yourself. So today, I'm going to show you how to make your very own bunch of paper roses. So we're going to need some watercolor paints, a paintbrush, pencil, some wires, some scissors, green tape, glue, beads, and normal paper, which I've already painted myself. So I'm going to take the first piece of paper and fold it into a large square. Trim off the excess rectangle. And fold it lengthways. One more time. So now when you unfold, you'll see that there are four little squares. We will only need three for this project. Cut them into little squares. Across like that. And let's snip across. Take one little square and fold it into a large triangle. Let's fold it again into a smaller triangle. This is the second fold. And then one more time to make a mini triangle. I'm going to grab my pencil and draw a petal shape along the edge. Cut around the petal shape, throwing off the excess. All right, I'm just gonna snip a teeny tiny bit on the corner at the bottom. It's time to unfold. And there you have it, your first flower. So we've got to repeat this step two more times. on the corner. All right. Okay, so let's move on to the next step. Take one flower and snip off one petal. For the second flower, snip off two petals. And for the third flower, snip off three petals. I'm gonna pick my largest piece up, grab your glue and add it on the first petal and roll it into a cone shape. So I'm overlapping two petals together. As you can see, our flower is growing. So I'm gonna grab my piece of wire, thread this little bead to the center of the wire and fold it in half. So now you have a stem. Pull everything apart and then put it all back together again. We start off with the center of the rose and place the stem into the center and just push it and repeat the process. So each time I add a layer, I'm just pulling back on the edges. And this is my last layer. Add a bit of sticky tape at the bottom just to prevent it from sliding down. And there you go, a perfect rose. Now I just need to make 11 more. Eek! Sometimes life can get pretty dull and boring and art's just your chance to sort of, you know, say what you really want to say, put yourself out there, um, put colour into your life. So how does art make you feel? Art can make you feel empowered sometimes, it can make you sad, it can make you happy, depending on what's on the page and how you see it. I could go to an art gallery and just look at just everything, it's like to me, art is just so amazing. It just releases your stress and things and it makes you feel good. It's just so like, uh, revitalizing. Oh.
Really? Art's meant to inspire people, so basically get people thinking. I think it's a great way to make you feel any number of emotions, really. I mean, yeah. good art can make you feel anything from you know, happy to, to angry. It's your perspective on what you think the art actually is and what it turns into in your mind. Do you want to take your filmmaking to a whole new level? Then here's some shots to do that. This is what you would call a tracking shot, which is used to move with your subject in a shot or find your subject in a scene. This is a push-in. It helps you move in and focus on your subject, sometimes giving you a looming effect. And on a downward angle, you can create an almost threatening feeling, almost as if the world's closing in on your character. The pull-out shot, on the other hand, will give you the feeling that the world is opening up. It's also a great way to say goodbye to your character. So how did I do it? Well, it was all done with this, a draw slider, which I'm going to show you how to turn into a camera slider. Now, here is what you need. A draw slider with ball bearings, two selfie stick mounts, a pen lid, and some super glue. It's literally that easy. Here we go. Start off with your pen lid, you're going to place it around about here. Now, this is going to act as your handle when you push and pull. So let's glue our pen lid to our draw slot on the top flat part of your pen lid. Like that. Look at that. Perfect. Make sure you don't get any glue in the tracks of the draw because otherwise it won't slide. This is actually going to work as your slider handle. Now we're going to glue on our camera mounts. The first one's going to be our tracking shot. So you want to glue it somewhere in the middle here, and it's going to be pointing out that way. So when you move, tracking with your subject or moving towards your subject. Let's stick on our first camera mount. So we're going to glue it. Now, this is about the area we want to stick it to. And hold that for about five minutes until it's nice and dry. Try not to get any glue on your fingers. Because it is very fast drying, it will make your fingers stick together. And you don't want that. Yep, that's all nice and dry. Now for the second one. Now your first one was pointing out this way. This one is going to be pointing out that way. So where you want to position it is to the opposite end of where you had your little hand piece there. Glue that on. And position. And Wait for another five minutes. <laughs> for about five minutes. It's like watching grass grow. When it's nice and dry, attach your camera phone and get arty with your filming. I'm Julie Tadham, I'm an artist and I specialise in body paint. Today I'm going to show you how we're going to paint this beautiful snake on my daughter Amy's arm. We're going to use these products here and the way these work is that the whole range of colours comes onto the brush in one swipe. So it makes it a real time saver for face painters. So first of all we're going to do the head of the snake. We're going to bring that right around, do the body. And having the black on one side and the colour on the other side really gives it that 3D effect really, really quickly. So the snake's body is kind of like an S. It comes down in a big loop, up, and then down, down, down for his long, skinny tail. So I always start with the body first on this snake because with face paint, you need to wait for one layer to dry before the next layer gets painted on. And the face has a couple of different layers. So there's his teeth and his eyes and some patterning around his mouth. So we need to make sure that's dry. So we do the body while the face is drying. Then we're gonna outline his whole body in black. And then we're going to outline the other side. Don't press too hard here because you don't want it to be a really thick line, just a nice, thin, even line. So when you're painting the outside of the snake, just press very, very lightly. 
With face and body painting, the pressure you place on the skin is really important. If you do a very light pressure, you'll get a thin line, a little bit heavier pressure, a thicker line, and really heavy pressure, a very thick line. So when you're outlining a snake, gently press and you'll get a nice fine line. Now we're gonna add some patterning into the back of his neck. So we just do these wiggly triangles. Really any simple pattern will do. It doesn't have to be exactly like this. All the way down his tail. And just pressing gently on the skin. So the next thing we're going to do is the eye of the snake because that face paint will be dry now. So we're going to lay down a sort of scary looking eye in this shape. Now we're going to let that dry and we'll come back in and put the eyeball in when that face paint's dry. So the next thing we're going to do is put some skin patterning on the snake. For that we're going to use a stencil and a face painting sponge. So we just hold the stencil over the painting and we just gently press onto the face paint and when you take the stencil away you can see it's got this beautiful texture like a reptile skin. We just keep doing that all around the S shape of the snake. If you don't have one of these stencils you can just put these dots on yourself but if you have one they're a really handy time saver. Okay so now that eye looks like it's nice and dry we can go back in and do the eyeball. So we just outline the eye, give it a really scary sort of look. The last thing we're going to do is grab some red. We're going to give him a scary red eye and a big, long, slippery red tongue. So put the red eyeball in, paint on this long, forked red tongue. OK, so our snake is done. Remember, you can do any animal you want. Just grab the colour you want and use your imagination. I'm about to enter a fairy's home here in Fitzroy Gardens. Come on. This artwork is by Ola Cohn and it was created in 1931 when she came here every day for three years to carve out the magical creatures into this red gum tree trunk. It's not every day that you work with an old curvy tree trunk to create an artwork, but Ola used the curvy knobbly bits to her advantage to enhance her characters, which consisted of fairies, dwarfs, gnomes, and Australian animals like possums, koalas, and cockatoos. And you can see here that Ola used a curvy bit of the trunk to create an emu. Ola managed to work with all the curves and the bumps of the tree, but she also had to consider how her artwork would survive on something that was rotting back into the earth. You see, this tree is over 300 years old and it had passed away long before Ola had found it. So preserving this artwork was really important. Thankfully for the fairies, the tree was carefully taken out of the ground and given a chemical treatment and remounted in concrete back in the park to start its new life. Ola's lasting legacy and consideration for the fairies will always be remembered by this tribute. I have carved a tree in the Fitzroy Gardens for you and the fairies, but mostly for the fairies and those who believe in them for they will understand how necessary it is to have a fairy sanctuary, a place that is sacred and safe as a home should be to all living creatures. After the break, we meet illustrator Toby Riddle.
There's two stages to making pictures. I can't really do anything until I've got an idea. I don't just draw in my notebook without thinking. I, I, I get an idea and then I try and work out how to picture it. You get ideas in big spaces and then it can be quite nice to go to quite a small space to do your work. Just about everyone's an artist when, when they're a child and, you know, you, you want to sort of pick up a crayon and draw on a wall and becoming good at art is becoming good at expressing yourself. And you don't always know what, why you need to express something, you just need to. I just really enjoyed it, I thought it was fun. I wasn't always the best drawer in my class. You've always got to be persistent with these things to get anywhere. Sometimes when you're drawing, very slight changes can change the whole emotion of the character. The eyes um, can achieve a lot of that. Humans communicate a lot with body language using your hands. And um, so I find my characters, it's about hand gestures and eyes. There are many ways to approach it. As long as the character feels alive on the page, it comes just with playing around, experimenting until you think you've got your character. You'll always make mistakes and some days you just, you're sort of in the zone and everything's working and other days nothing seems to work. Sometimes also you make a mistake in an artwork that's otherwise working and it's actually a discovery. Um, they can be happy mistakes and you can turn them into a new uh, technique or something like that. In the last few books I've done, I've started experimenting with stamping. Started with uh, just stamps I found in junk shops, like old 1950 stamps of animals and things. And then more and more I've started playing around with that until I've got a whole lot of techniques where you can make quite complicated images, all with stamping and, and sponging ink on and stencils and things like that. My only rule is so long as it works. And I learnt that um, travelling some time ago. I was in Europe to, to try and study art and draw what I could see. And I, I took with me a nice bag with lots of paints and a nice big book uh, to paint in. And then the bag got stolen. So I bought a tiny little pad that fitted in my coat pocket. And I had one black pen and I set off drawing again. I was in Italy and I noticed that the coffee was a really nice colour and almost without thinking, I dipped my finger in it and started adding that coffee colour to these little sketches I was doing and it really seemed to work. That always taught me that anything can be used to make an image. If you never give up, it, who knows where you'll get to, just keep going if it's what you really want to do. My name's Toby Riddle. I specialise in making pictures and uh, I use all kinds of techniques to make those pictures. Let's <laughs> go.